Hello again. Uh, part three, four, five. Don't know what this one is. Um, all comes down to the editing, I think, doesn't it? Um, so Christmas, yeah, Christmas was good. And another good time of year was Halloween. Um, back then, it wasn't as commercialised as what it is now. Not by a long shot. Um, you made your own costumes, well, like bin liners, pieces of cardboard, uh, whatever you could lay your hands on, really, or whatever your parents could afford. Um, like, you know, and you'd go around asking people for sweets and money if they had any money. Um, like, and having to literally dunk rabbles in people's front gardens and stuff like that, where you cut up a bowl and try drowning yourself whilst trying to pick up an apple, which you didn't eat at the end of it. You normally just threw it away because it was pretty gross. Um, you still had, I think you've, still, you've got it today, you, you, you got the grumpy guys, you know, that don't like, you know, you lock on the door. Trick or treat, and he's doing rah, 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 tell you to fuck off, or like you know, and off you went. Now, they hated kids or didn't believe in Halloween or whatever it may be. So, um, this allowed us kids, um, to pay a heavy retribution on those people, but we didn't actually use that word because we didn't know what it meant at the time, but anyway. So this punishment came for not giving us sweet money or even just being nice. Um, like, you know, the, the best one was we used to get a paper bag. Um, get some dog shit. See a dog poop. Um, get some dog poop, fold it up. Douse it in uh, lighter fluid or petrol, if you could get hold of it. And your dad normally always had, a, for some unknown reason, a petrol can in their sheds. I don't know why, but they always seem to have it. Um, oh, excuse me. Ooh, um, anyway, but yeah, douse for bag in petrol or light the fluid, put it on their doorstep, set fire to it, ring the bell, knock the door, like, like and leg it behind the car. This resulted in the old man, the, the grumpy bastard, coming outside and, like, you know, looking down. Big fire, big fire. Oh my God. And what did they do? <coughs> Try to stamp it out, of course ended up with um, dog poo um, all over their shoes. It worked once or twice. Uh, we had a whale of a time. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was just one of those things. And, and at the end, you just go home and like have like lots of like sweets and treats and count up all the two pennies and five pennies and see how much money you had at the end of the night. Um, it, it was always a good night. Penny for the guy as well. Um, that was a, it was a bit of a strange one for Penny for the guy. Um, you literally made an effigy, 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 effigy of like Guy Fawkes, um, which was normally just bin bags full of paper or straw. Took it around the house, knocked on the door and said, Penny for the guy. Uh, I don't, and they used to give you 5p or 10p and then you go to the next house. You know? And then at the end you just throw it away or put it on a bonfire and burn it. Was that bonfire night? Yeah, it was bonfire. But Penny for the guy, what? I, I don't know. I'm sort of, sort of semi glad that never really took on because it's just paying small children to burn energies. Uh, bizarre, really. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it was good. Um, like you know, but growing up like seventies and eighties, as we're still on, um, like you know, mum and dad changed a bit during that time, especially my dad. Um, uh, like you know, you know, my dad's not a very tall chap. Uh, he probably comes up just over my shoulder on me. Um, but he was well built, well built. He was an engineer all his life, plumber. So anything was manual handling. So he was used to picking up boiler scaffolding, you name it. Used to all manual handling, like you know. Um, so he was a big chap. But for the height, um, do you know what I mean? He made up for this. Um, by at one point, he he grew a massive Rasputin type beard. You know, you could literally, like, you know, you, you could, like, grow potatoes in it. It was massive. Um, he had an afro once as well. Yeah, a five-foot Welsh white guy with an afro. Didn't, 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 no, no, he even had the comb, the proper comb for it as well. Strange man, strange man. And another thing he had as well, he had a fetish for Star Chin Hutch, uh, which was a cop show uh, back then. Um, really cool one. But one of them used to wear like cardigans. Uh, my mum used to knit. 
Um, so, um, they used to make him cardigans. Um, he had this red, black, and white one, uh, which he used to wore everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Um, and I think I adopted it for a while when I was later as well. It was a lovely thing. They had he had a white one, and he had this one. Oh, it, it was it was quite mad how they changed. Um, it, it was it was pretty bad. Um, my mum was always my mum really. She she like you know was dressed nice, was dressed smart, but she, she you know she was she worked out of a garage, uh, a finer garage, Fina finer F I N A whatever you call it. She worked down there uh, for ages, and I think she worked in a camera shop in Ponty Creve for a while as well. But in between all these little jobs and earning that extra little bit of cash. Uh, she was still mum, you know, she she made your birthday cake, she made your meals, she did all your washing. Um, they had a washing machine in the house, yeah, it's not like modern days now, it was, um, it was a pull-out one. And she they slid it underneath the counter somewhere, but you had a twin twin drum on top. Um, and one side, like, you put the washing, and it used to rattle around the bloody kitchen. You couldn't actually walk through the kitchen because of this bloody washing machine. And the other side, there was a tumble dryer, and if she had both of them going, oh, it, it was like going to a rock concert. Um, it, it, it was it was mad. You, you couldn't actually do anything. Um, but, you know, she kept the house going. She kept the house going well. And in between then, my dad used to take me out a lot and, and stuff, and he, he started... Um, an obsession with me um which would stay with me for the rest of my life uh, basically so um and this came about it was in between going to rove park and fishing and going to porth call fishing off a pier and all this sort of stuff we used to go to cardiff airport um back in the day where it wasn't a big international thing it was more like a shack in a field um and we used to go there and plane spot uh, which was nice. Uh, we used to get all the numbers off the planes, and I used to have all these books um, with all the airplane numbers in it. And we used to go and get the numbers, and then we used to go back and, and give a book and find the plane number and underline it to say that we had seen it. Um, it was mad. Um, right next door, as well, to Cardiff Airport, I think, where their multi story car park is now because it's a lot bigger than what it was when I was there. Um, there used to be, I think, they passed it off as a museum, sort of, um, but really it was just like a, a junkyard full of old planes. Um, and you could go in and you could rummage around in the planes, you could climb over them, you could climb in them underneath them, take parts if you knew what you were looking for. Um, and it was mad. We we went up to London. He took me up to London on a couple of occasions, and uh, with the Heathrow and Gatwick, and to see all the planes and get all the numbers. And then we used to do half and half. So we used to go and do all the planes and take all the plane numbers, and then um, indulge in my dad's obsession of trains. And then so we used to go to Paddington and Euston and King's Cross and get all of those numbers for on the side of a train so he could go back and do things he had, I had one with all the air, air, airplane numbers and he had one with all the trains uh, numbers in it was great it was absolutely fantastic um, and I remember one Christmas they bought me a radio uh, which could pick up air traffic control and it could pick up the airplanes oh I had way of a time way of a time with that one um and like you know it's fantastic listening to talking you couldn't talk to them it was just a tune in radio type thing like you know um and it was mad and all in around that time um as well they started in cardiff uh cardiff airport roos airport um doing air shows um so they used to close the airport now and then they used to have all these people flying around in planes doing aerobatics and flybys and letting off smoke and all this sort of stuff uh, and literally used to sit like three foot away from the side of a the runway these planes you could reach out and touch them that that's how close they were to health and safety out of a window um no one cared because it was such a good day but it was a lovely day out for family we all used to go down there as a family and you used to have a flask and my dad had this big flask a red flask uh, tea and tea never i don't like tea but out of that flask it tasted lovely i don't know what it was it was it was mad 
it was mad. Um, and we used to sit there and drink the tea and eat the sandwiches and watch all these planes go by. Um, and the highlight was the Red Arrows. Um, it was for Red Arrows. Uh, it was for Royal Air Force Display Team. Um, still going today, different planes. Um, and they used to come and do their bit. Um, and man, I fell in love with these guys. Because they were flying around. They didn't use hawks back then. Um, they were using gnats back then. Um, but they used to do all these manoeuvres and oh, cross hatching smoke everywhere and low flying stuff. Oh, it was amazing to watch. Amazing to watch as a kid. And they're still they're still pretty good today, let's face it. Um and in my mind, even at a sm that very, very small age, watching those guys fly around. Um, it embedded in myself in my head that that's what I want to do. Um, I want to become a pilot. I want to fly in the red arrows. I wanna I want to join the RAF. <laughs> um but we'll get back to that a lot later. Um